Alright, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we're going to be talking about a potential tropical cyclone, believe it or not, offshore of the East Coast. So we have a lot to talk about within this video. Now, for today's comment of the day, I want to know, do you think anything is going to happen with this tropical cyclone, or do you think it's just never going to really occur? Let me know in the comments down below your thoughts, and I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. Also, be sure to subscribe, like, and comment down below. Let's get straight into things, and first things first, we're taking a look at the two-day graphical tropical weather outlook. And as you can see, pretty much nothing is going on, so you're kind of probably wondering, like, what in the world? Tropical cyclone activity is not expected during the next 48 hours. Okay. Well, that leaves us at a point where we need to look at the five-day graphical tropical weather outlook, and here it is, finally, here we go. 20% chance of development there offshore of Florida, Georgia, and South Carolina. Uh, and I think it actually is maybe going to increase a little bit here. We have the European model on board and the GFS model, not so much. So we're going to need to update you guys on all of that stuff at the end of this video. We'll take a look at the model guidance. But for now, we're just going to move on with this type of stuff. 20% chance that leaves a lot of room for improvement there and seeing this kind of uh, either fizzle out or possibly head towards a higher percentage, perhaps 40, 60, kind of in that orange range there. Uh, in, in development, but overall we're taking a look at most of that development expected to happen around the later portion of that five-day period. Now here's the satellite imagery. This is obviously important because this is where that area of development is expected to occur. And as you can see, there's just some general storminess around offshore of the East Coast in general. All of those tall clouds are with that cold front that came through just a few days ago. You might remember it if you live, live anywhere near the East Coast, you know a cold front came through uh, and had some pretty nasty storms along it for most areas. And that is that cold front you can physically see there well out into the Atlantic Ocean. But mostly we want to draw our attention down there to the southeast where we have some storminess, but not really that much yet. Uh, and then by the time we reach kind of the middle portion of this morning, you know, very, very early, probably probably like 2 a.m. or so here. You could see some of that storminess actually developed further along the southeast coast and further offshore of the east coast because it was mostly just greens and yellows, but now we're seeing a lot of those dark reds indicating very, very tall clouds are out there in the middle of the southeast Atlantic, I guess, north of the Bahamas, offshore of Florida, Georgia, South Carolina there. Uh, and then as we reach approximately 5 a.m. or so, here we are taking a look and you can see that those reds have developed even further. So this area is kind of proving to be very good for storm development and none of this is expected to be the tropical cyclone. Actually, we're expecting to see an area of storminess move offshore of the east coast potentially and then once it reaches over the Atlantic developing further, then potentially curving back northwest or north northward up the east coast or potentially offshore of the east coast. Now what we're going to do is we're going to move on and take a look at the sea surface temperatures, just take a look at how good this area actually is for development right now. Then we're going to take a look at the probability of tropical depression according to the European model and just move on and take a look at some other factors and see what these models really think. Now here is the sea surface temperature anomalies. And as you can see, mostly offshore of the East Coast, immediately offshore of the East Coast, we have some near normal conditions, but further offshore there, uh, we have some very warm temperatures compared to normal, uh, even one degree Celsius or more above what is typical for this area this time of year. Uh, so that's kind of interesting and could certainly help the development. Having near normal even helps as well because near normal will be good enough. It's mostly the below normal temperatures that we would kind of be watching for because that could hinder development. Everything else will be very supportive of tropical development. Now here is the seven day change. So this shows us what direction things are kind of heading in. And there's a few interesting things going on here. I mean, first off, the Gulf is just very much so firing up. I mean, we over the past seven days, we've seen temperatures increase by as much as one to two degrees Celsius in seven days. This has really led to an above average sea surface temperature Gulf of Mexico which is obviously very concerning looking towards the hurricane season. Also, basically the entire Caribbean as well has also increased in temperature, just not quite as much, and then offshore of the East Coast. So overall, mostly things have warmed over the past seven days, and that is where things are kind of headed, which is obviously a very concerning look. Now, taking a look here at the European model's probability of tropical depression, 
This is day zero through three, so it's the next three days. Um, we basically have a 10 to 20% chance there in the purple region. So there's one there in the MDR, the main development region in the middle of the Atlantic. You see that mostly towards the bottom right hand corner of your screen. Don't really know how likely that is. Offshore of the East Coast, that is our area that we're watching, but I do expect it to happen later than day zero through three. So let's take a look at the days three through six. And as you can see, the probabilities kind of go up. We still have that 10 to 20% chance region, but then we have a 20 to 30% chance region scattered in those blue areas. And day six through nine, we really kind of lower that probability. Now this model looks to kind of take that percentage way offshore. I think there's a really good chance that it really hits the East Coast or stays along the East Coast, in my opinion. Uh, but that's just my current thoughts. Now what we're going to do is we're going to move on. We're going to take a look at the cyclonic vorticity according to the European model and the GFS model to see if either of these models have this storm developing. All right, now here we are taking a look here at that European model's uh, cyclonic vorticity. And as you can see, we see this is approximately Wednesday evening, I would say, about 9 p.m. or so. And there's not much going on yet. But by the time we reach Friday kind of afternoon, I would say maybe around noontime or 1 p.m., maybe even a little bit later, we see that there is some reds going on. And this basically... If you look at the scale at the bottom there, the, the further to the right on the scale you are, the more large scale, large frame rotation is going on there. So we're looking for large scale rotation, obviously, for tropical cyclones because they have large scale rotation. It's kind of like the number one thing that goes on in a tropical cyclone. Uh, so the more reds and purples we start to see show up, the more of that is going on and the more tropical development basically in this region. So we see some of that going on now by this point. And by the time we reach about 5 a.m. there on Saturday, we see more and more. We see the darker reds showing up there. That is definitely some rotation. Uh, and eventually we peak out by about maybe 1 or 2 p.m. here on Saturday, July 24th. That's going to be three days from now. Look at that. We see the bright, bright pinks, which means maximum amounts of rotation are going on there. So definitely some tropical development is expected here from this European model for this tropical cyclone. We're going to want to watch this closely. It has it heading basically directly northward after this point. So we will be watching this ever so closely as obviously this could bring some impacts to the East Coast uh, or it could basically go out to sea. And I've kept that option open. You saw that on the thumbnail. It either goes out to sea or hits the East Coast. Now, we don't know which one is more likely at this point. Um, by the time we're reaching about I would say 8 p.m. here on Sunday, you can see this is headed north almost towards the outer banks of North Carolina. So this model looks to keep it kind of in between. Still some very strong rotation in there. You know, still in the middle ranges to upper ranges there in the rotation. And if we see this tropical cyclone head north towards basically the eastern United States, obviously that is a concerning look um, as that would bring direct land impacts. And the outer banks are very, very used to this type of a storm. So this isn't so much of a, Thing they can't handle but obviously we would prefer to see that not really occur we don't want to see any land falling tropical systems obviously so we're going to be watching this one very very closely over the next three days towards the weekend i'm going to be tracking this one obviously if that chance d diminishes that's very good news but obviously if the chance goes up we will continue to track this storm daily as we see if it's going to develop or not or bring impacts or not and things of that nature for basically the United States at this point is, and Canada as well could have some potential threats down the road from this tropical cyclone. Anyway, for today's confidence tab, we're at a four out of six. I feel like um, I've made it very clear that I stand about 50-50 on this one. It could develop, could fizzle out, uh, and I feel very confident that either of those things could happen, obviously. For today's patron Highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our Platinum Patrons, John Ben Benick, James Wade, Dovey Nagel, Larry LePan, and Donna Carnes. Alongside our Diamond Patrons, Bill Roberts, Marcus Connolly, Noah Harley, Michael Cotalesa, Cat Bite, Charles Stinnett, Cindy Klein, Mark J, Luke Flago, Gary, John Qualisi, Dwight Phelan, and Stephen Crenenthal. If you would like to be a part of this patron entry of the day, you can do so by joining our very exciting Patreon page in the description and in the pinned comments down below. I would also like to thank our channel members, Hair Farms One and Cat Bite as well. I also just realized I skipped the comment of the day, so here it is. It's just me said, well, let me start with what I actually asked, and I asked how do you think this upcoming fall is going to go, because we just released 
our official first fall forecast. And it's just me said, I believe this fall will be a warmer fall, hopefully, so we can have a snowy and cold winter. Because I've been talking about how usually if there's a warm fall, you see a cold winter. And if there's a cold fall, you usually see a warm winter. So a lot of people kind of unanimously agreed that uh, they would prefer a warmer fall so that we can get a colder winter. Very, very interesting there. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to destroy the like button and leave a comment down below. Also, be sure to subscribe if you like weather-related content. I will see you guys in the next video.